Ronna McDaniel, chairwoman of the RNC, with me now from Washington. Ronna, welcome back and good morning to you. But before I get to the next rally in Minnesota and get a sense of what you think about the midterms, what is the Kavanaugh issue doing? What, what sort of numbers do the RNC have and see about the level of interest in this story, perhaps? Well, Democrats have been talking about their energy uh, throughout this past two years. It has exploded the Republican energy. I think a lot of Republicans are looking at how Democrats handled the Kavanaugh hearings, holding these allegations in their back pocket till the 11th hour, the abysmal behavior by Dianne Feinstein. Uh, and they are energized and they're frustrated by the process. And for me, as I'm traveling the country, it's something I'm hearing about quite a bit. We know in 2016, one in five voters voted based on the Supreme Court. It was their number one issue. And I'm starting to see that rise okay, again so within I our party. I also saw this poll where w women, their support for him has dropped 10 points. Does, does, uh, li not, does that line up with your information? It, it does not. And I've been in several states since the Kavanaugh hearings, and we're seeing an uptick with women. It, it's across the board that support the president and their energy for Republican candidates is growing. So uh, we're, had, and, and you're seeing the generic ballot narrow. So I think uh, Republicans are looking at these midterms, they are awake. And now the president getting out there and saying, let's look at what we've done, the results. The re Democrats are about resistance and obstruct and the Kavanaugh hearings have exemplified that. We have got to get out if we want to keep Washington productive for the American okay, people. Let me show the folks at home a little bit on the board that we're cooking up for midterms five weeks away. Balance of power right now uh, in the House. You see where Republicans and Democrats are lined up. Uh, Rana, we have 30 toss-ups on our map right now. Okay. Maybe, th maybe there's more. Maybe there are less over the next month or so. But right now, as of today, we see 30, four of which are in Minnesota, uh, districts one, two, three, and eight. I know the president's going to go there on, what, is it three days from now? Yeah, on Saturday, the president's going to go there. He's going to be in the okay. first district, which is the open seat that Tim Waltz is vacating. Okay, so that's the southern part of the state, uh, southern part of the border. Come to the maps here, Jimmy. Come on back here. As you see things change here, what we've done is we've divided the country in regions. So we'll go to the upper Midwest here in Minnesota. And you mentioned the number of districts, one, two, three, and eight. Uh, are all toss-ups. I, I understand why he's going to Minnesota in the House battles, but why do you find yourself fighting for a Senate seat in Tennessee, a Senate seat in Mississippi? Why is that happening? Well, the president's traveling the whole country to get out our base, and obviously he is endorsed Cindy Hyde-Smith in Mississippi, which is going to be a jungle primary in November, so she wants to make sure she's one of the top two, because there's two Republicans that are viable and one Democrat. But uh, in Minnesota, I mean, there are two potential flips for Republicans in that first uh, district and the eighth. These are seats that we can pick up and take back from the Democrats. So we're going on offense and defense, and we want to make sure we're protecting our majority in the House. The president is very aware what happens if we lose the majority. Nancy Pelosi becomes speaker. She will raise taxes, and she will shut Washington down. And all that we've gained, all this comeback, will be stopped in its tracks. And in the midterms, that first midterm of a sitting president, we usually lose on average 30 seats. So the president's fighting as hard as he can to keep everything, uh, and he's not taking any yeah, seats just, just quickly on, on, the, on the generic ballot, what was it a month ago? It was 12 or 13 points in some mm -hmm. polling. Now it suggests yes. it might be seven or eight points. What do your numbers show? We're seeing it narrow also. We're, we've seen narrow it narrow, to, and obviously it's, it, it's different district by district. You know, we're in California, New York, uh, very different districts in, the, in those states. But I'm saying McSally doing well in Arizona. Rick Scott's doing well in Florida. We've seen Kevin Kramy, Kramer having a lead in North Dakota, Mike Braun in Indiana. I mean, there are okay. opportunities for us to pick up Senate seats, and we can keep the House. I hope you can come back, okay? Ronna McDaniel, Thank five you. weeks to go. Thank you for your time. We'll see whether or not you're right. <laughs> Thanks, Ronna.